Hello, welcome back to our beginner's 3D animation course. So now we have our Jack in the Box rigged and ready to go when it comes to animating it. So what's the plan? The plan is for the Jack to be tucked down inside the box and the box lid to be closed. And then for the crank to rotate a few times as if it's being cranked like you would with the Jack in the Box toy. And then at the end of the crank, the lid should pop open the jack should spring out and kind of bounce back and forth and come to a rest. So that's the plan. So we could go about this several different ways, and, but I'm going to show you just one simple way using a deformer as well as just keyframing uh, not only the curve points for the neck, but also just keyframing objects such as the lid to the box and the crank to create the final effect. So first, even though the Jack doll is not tucked in yet, we're gonna go ahead and do the crank animation now. So the crank is going to spin, and you can spin it however many times you want to. Uh, let's say it spins like four or five times. So we're gonna need some animation frames to work with. So don't forget that we're working in 30 frames per second, which again, you can set right here. And you'll notice that because I uh, started a new scene whenever I created this Jack in the Box, it's been reset to my default value of 24 frames per second. So I need to go back here to Settings in my Preferences uh, Categories list, change my working units of time from film 24 FPS to NTSC 30 FPS. Then I can go back to my time slider settings here and see that it's now set to real time 30 frames per second and hit save. And when you do this, if you remember, it kind of changes this first frame here to be 1.25. You can change it to 1, hit enter, and I, that's all set up and ready to go. So now we have our scene set to 30 frames per second, and we're going to start animating the crank. So how long should the crank spin before it stops and the jack pops up? This is just a simple beginner's animation. You're not making a feature length film, so you don't want it to last forever. You're, if you're going to show it to an audience, you kind of want to convey to the audience what's happening, you know, make, have them picture the scene and understand what's going on, but then not bore them to death either. So let's say it spins for just a few seconds, like maybe three. So three seconds at 30 frames per second, that'd be 90 frames. So between one and 90, we're going to have the crank spin a few times. So let's say at frame one, we can set a keyframe for the crank's starting position. Now, right now, it's kind of just a set up, just straight up and down, perpendicular to the ground position. And that's kind of robotic and stiff. Even though it is a toy, it's not a real person. It just, things just look a bit more lived in, look a bit more real, more used, when everything's not just set up to 90 degree angles. So let's say it starts somewhere like this. So, so whenever the scene opens, we see the jack-in-the-box is going to be closed, but the handle's not just straight up and down. It makes it seem more real. You can see here I have rotate X is 30. You can, of course, use whatever starting angle you want. I'm going to have frame 1, right-click on rotate X, key selected. So rotate X has been keyed. I'm not going to worry about rotate Y or Z since we're not going to be spinning this thing in the other direction. So at frame 90... We know that's going to be the end of the animation. So if it spins once, one full rotation is 360 degrees from the start. So 360 plus the 30 that we're starting at. So that would be 390. That's one rotation. If we want it to spin through a few times, we would do 360 multiplied by however many times we're going to be spinning. So if it spins three times, 360 degrees times three will be 1,080. And then we add on the 30 frames that we have here. That'd be 1,080 plus 30. So that would be 1,110, right? Something or something around there. So let's say we type in here at frame 90, 1,110, and hit enter. So the crank doesn't seem like it's moved, but that's because we've done three full rotations, and it's back to the same position at the end of the 90 frames. And again, that is also something that we might want to try to avoid. Having it start and stop at the exact same position is kind of unrealistic. So I'm going to rotate this not exactly 1,110, maybe put it around over here. So it's 1,020 in this case. 
So I'm going to again select rotate X, right click and key selective. So if I rewind and hit play, we can see the crank go. And you'll notice that the crank kind of starts slow and speeds up and then kind of eases into the end of its sequence. And that's kind of what we'd want to happen anyway. We don't necessarily want it to be a straight A to B uh, linear line when it comes to its animation curve in the graph editor, having that little bit of a bend where it starts slow and speeds up and then kind of eases to an end is what we're looking for. And let's go back to our split screen here where we can see the graph editor and perspective view at the same time. And let's look at that curve. So I have the, the uh, crank selected, and you can name these again. Let me name this crank like this. And then I can select my rotate X down here, press F to frame it. So this is my rotate X animation curve from frame one to 90. It's, it starts slow, it speeds up, and then it slows down again. That's what this plateau does on either side of this animation curve. You can exaggerate that or diminish that however you want it to look. If you would rather it start quicker, you can move that curve up like this, hit play, and there it goes. If you think, well, that's kind of fast, maybe it should rotate slower, you can decrease the value of the rotate X so it's not spinning as often. If you still want it to spin the same number of rotations, maybe you need it to last longer, and then the spin won't be as fast. So that's how you would control your visual. So for example, if I select this keyframe at the end of my curve, You'll see here in the stats, this is at frame 90, and this is the value, 1020. You can change that value to change the number of rotations. You can add a rotation by, if I add in, you know, 360 here, so it'll be 1380, for example. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just show you. 1380. And hit enter. You'll see my curve changes shape, and I've added another rotation to my crank's movement. So it all depends on how you want your crank to move faster, slower, uh, less rotations, more rotations, and so on. So our crank is pretty much done when it comes to the animation process. So we're at frame 90, and at frame 90, that's when the crank stops, and that which means that's when the jack-in-the-box starts. So at first, we want the lid to pop open and the jack to spring out. So first we need to tuck the jack in, right? So how are we gonna do that? There's several ways. I'm gonna hit the space bar here to uh, close my graph editor and just have the perspective view visible. There are several ways to make the jack squat down. For example, if we were to open up the outliner view, this third button down is the perspective slash outliner, which gives me my perspective view as well as the outliner on the left side. You can see here all the components in my scene including the joints. You'll, this little plus sign next to joint one, if I click it, it expands it by one in the hierarchy. So you get the joint two, click that, joint three, and you can close them. Or if you hold down the shift key and click it, it opens all of them. So you can see the entire hierarchy list for all the joints. So if I were to select all the joints, if I click joint six, hold down shift and click joint one, so I have all the joints selected. And let's say I scale them. I'm gonna click the R shortcut key for scale and I'm scale them down in the X direction. You can see that kind of works, kind of. I emphasize kind of. <laughs> because the head is paired to that joint, the scaling's kind of funky. So because it squishes the head down like that whenever I scale the joints, I'm not gonna use that method for getting the head down into the box. There's another thing we can do is called a lattice deformer. So I'm gonna select the geometry, the neck geometry and the head geometry of the jack-in-the-box. Not the joints, just the geometry. We'll go to deform, lattice, and in the options for the lattice, I'm going to say edit, reset settings to make sure I have my default values, and hit create. So what this gives me is this cage around the jack-in-the-box. This cage is a deformer around the geometry, and what it does is when you adjust the points of the cage, it modifies the geometry, kind of like little magnets. If I right click on the lattice, you see I can choose lattice points, so I get these little lattice points that I can select. So when I select this point and move it, you can see how it kind of stretches the geometry of the head around as it's trying to be pulled toward that point. So everything within 
this box of the lattice is being controlled by these points. This point down here does not affect the head because it's not within this box. It will affect the geometry next to it, but not the hat, for example. So what I want to do, I don't want the head to squish too much whenever I'm tucking this thing down. So what I can do is select the T divisions, which is the number of uh, horizontal lines we have dividing our lattice up into quadrants. I'm going to increase that division number, say six instead of five. So now I have this two cube quadrant that has my entire Jack in the Box's head within it. So whenever I select all the points of that quadrant, and if you're having difficulty selecting it because it likes to select the IK handle, up here my selection masks, I have the joint selection mask turned off, but you can also turn off the handle selection mask here by clicking that little plus sign. So now when I click and drag a selection box, it will select my lattice points like it should. So now when I move my lattice points like this as a whole, as a group, the head is not being squished around at all. The neck down here is being stretched out, but that's okay. So whenever I move this up and down, you'll see how the head does not get squished. But these points down here, if I move them up and down, my accordion shape, which is designed to be squished, gets squished up and down as I move this row of lattice points up and down. So the lattice is going to be our method for animating the jack-in-the-box being tucked down inside the box and also springing out. So how do we do that? Well first we know the box is going to be out upright in its upright position at frame or soon after frame 90. Around here somewhere the crank's going to stop at frame 90 and then the jack should spring out around this point in time. So where is it going to be up and up? How long does it take to come out of the box? Shouldn't take long, less, you know, it's a split second and it's really springing out of there. So let's say five or six, seven frames, maybe. So between frame 90 and 95, and we can always adjust the timing of this if that's too fast. Let's say at frame 95, just simply five frames after the crank stops, the Jack in the Box has sprung up to its full upright position. So at this current position, where it is now, is where it should be at frame 95. So I'm going to select all of these lattice points. I'm at frame 95 and hit the S key. And this actually sets a keyframe for the individual lattice points where they are in time right now. You'll see down here in my time slider, I have a red line indicating a keyframe has been set. And it's been set for each individual lattice point of this lattice. So before that, the crank over here is cranking between, you know, frame 1 and 90. The head and the jack in the box's neck should all be tucked down inside the box. So let's say around frame 87 or so, which is split second before the crank stops, is when the jack starts to move. It's being triggered from within the box. I'm going to move these lattice points so that the head and neck are all tucked inside the box. I'm going to press 4 for my wireframe view. So I'm going to grab this row of points and move it way down here. So it's right there next to the bottom row of lattice points. Same for this one. I'm going to grab this row of points, move it way down here, right next to those first two rows. And now I'm going to grab all of these points and move it down to be right there. So you'll notice the hat still sticks up out of the box. That's okay. We can grab this top row. Let's say the hat is made out of a flexible material like cloth. We can kind of squish it down like this. So we can presume the lid will be holding down the felt or cloth hat. And when the lid springs open, that hat also springs up into its full shape. So now with my lattice points, controlling the head and neck shape down and tucking them down inside the box, we can select all of them at frame 87 and click S on the keyboard to set a keyframe. So now, as I scrub back and forth between frame 87 and 95, my jack comes to life. So here I'm going to hit play, boing, and it just pops right up. I don't think that's even too fast. I think that's probably a good speed. So obviously we don't have all the bounciness going on yet, but that's okay, we're getting there. But we have a good starting point.
for the Jack in the Boxes movement. We have this lid to deal with. The lid right now is stuck open. We know that the jack starts popping up right through here around 87. So before that, let's say frame 86, we can rotate this lid to its closed position. Now you'll notice right now the lid is rotated negative 120 degrees and rotate X. So when I rotate this to zero, it actually closes the box. I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna rotate this to zero, like so. Rotate X is zero. At frame 86, I'm going to right click on rotate X and key selected. So before the jack springs all the way up, the box should be open at this point here at frame 90. So I can rotate this lid back to its negative 120 degree value, key selected. Like so. One other thing to notice, you'll notice the nose right here is long enough that it actually breaks through the geometry of the box. However, it's such a fast animation that between frame 89 and 90, you don't even see it happen. So that's not something we have to worry about too much. If there was a frame within this movement that you saw the nose just sticking right through the box, you might need to adjust it. But even then, it's so fast, your audience might not even notice. All right, so let's uh, back up a little bit so we can see our animation so far. Rewind, hit play. Okay, we're getting somewhere. In our next part, we're going to continue with our animation and we're going to have that jack not just spring up and stop, but we're gonna have it kind of bounce around and scare the kids. <laughs> so I hope to see you then.